Thank you very much. Um, this gives me enormous pleasure. I've known Jan for eight years now, um, and I'm always finding things out about him. Uh, so, so, so it gives me enormous pleasure to, to introduce this lecture. Uh, these lectures are important. Um, they are the thing that gives people uh, the chance to talk about their work over a protracted period, and, and I think that's exactly what Jan's going to do if he's not leaving. Um, hopefully he's not leaving. Um, anyway, I, I just need to introduce um, a few people. Uh, Darwin, uh, Jen Gong, uh, Brian and Alistair, who are our special guests this evening, as well as everybody else. And it's very good that so many people have turned up this evening. Um, the, the, the sort of the theme of the lecture that we're about to hear is sort of the transition from art student uh, to cultural revolution and then to engineer. And, and I have to say that I, this came as a complete surprise to me two or three years ago uh, when, when you, success, where you, was, you were recognized by ASME and given your, your, your distinguished position uh, for robotics. Uh, and you know people uh, and sort of, you know, we chat and occasionally meet and, and talk about things and, and sort of you don't recognize necessarily what went on in their previous lives. So, so it, it came as a complete surprise to me to find A, that Jam was as old as he was because he never occurred to me, he still seems young and vigorous and, and lots of energy. Uh, and nowadays where we make so much fuss about multidisciplinarity, it is so pleasing to see that somebody made that transition uh, and many, many decades ago. Uh, and uh, hopefully we're going to hear a little bit about that tonight. Jan. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Peter. And thank you for our honorable guest, Professor Darwin Corell from the Italian Institute of Technology and Professor Guanzhong Yang from Imperial and Professor Brian Davis from Imperial. And my lecture is about arts. So I have prepared from arts inspiration and arts development to arts robots. So including a doctrine for art robotics. So what is art? If we look into dictionary, art is the work based on creative imagination and gives out the aesthetic pleasure. So let's look into this art in nature. We see this picture, that's a photo. If you see the perspective view, you can see the vanishing point on horizon. You can see the color mingled with the sky and trees and with the tranquil lake. And if you see the next picture, what this gives to you, it gives you a tranquility a calm, a horizon. If we look into the vanishing point, they are mingled, the sky and the ocean. If we look into this uh, copper stones, they are all in such beauty shapes. So that's the nature gives the art. And if we look into another art from nature, trees, and branches to form a beautiful nest. However, from this nest, what we can do, if we look into our extension of natural art, so into this man-made, the Beijing Olympic Stadium, we can see how this inspiration from the art gives us such a wonderful architecture as well as London, Gurgen Tower. So those arts appeared in our daily life, which we possibly ignored. We didn't take it into consideration for any paper folded furniture or flowers, and we call origami. And we have another part of art, so sound, Art. So if we look into this uh, 
bit of a pastor. So we can see, we can listen, we, we can imagine this rolling field, and we can imagine this greasy sheep, and we can imagine all the countryside beauty. But how these arts give us the inspiration and aspiration? I have an example. If we look back into Renaissance art, we all know this is a famous picture, The Last Supper, and was painted by Leonardo da Vinci. And he's the artist. So he's specializing in sculpture, in painting, also in design. So we can see how these arts can give us any imagination. Can we link art into our machine design or even robot design? If we look into 1485 picture painted by Leonardo da Vinci, and we see the model made from his photo, and that's the current Da Vinci robot. So we can see how this linked together from the arts to robotics to our current this dextrous surgical robots. And we see how many arms and these arms virtually appeared in Leonardo da Vinci original photo, original painting. In this century, in this 21st century, with this input from Leonardo da Vinci robots, we have a rise of robots. So this century is a robotic century. This is decade is the rise of robotics everywhere. If we look into this fourth industrial revolution, which people cast it, at the same level as our first industrial revolution. So robotic revolution creates market worth of thousands of billions. And we see all the robots which operate in automotive industry. And we can see how these period appeared into two time slots. If we look into the previous 25 years, from 1805 to 2010, it's industrial robots which come everywhere, and we have the, the start of medical robots. And today, we are honored to have our founder of medical robotics, Professor Brian Davis. And then from 2010, for the next 25 years, there will be a thriving of a live robot, of daily life, of a domestic, of a healthcare robots. So in 25 years' time, you will see robots will be so popular as our industrial automotive robots. The case here, are these robots the same style? Serial, parallel, is there any innovation we can give and how? Let's look in one video. That was in Netherlands. We know and Netherlands has a lot of sea. Um, so um, if we look at So if we look into this sea robot, so that's a sea beast god. And in this sea beast god, it's a very complicated, huge, however, if we look into this beast god, a simple mechanism, which is a full bar linkage, which plays a very important role. And that's the one innovation needs 
kinematics, and we need mechanisms. And mechanisms and robots just like a human skeleton and human being. So they are inseparable. In such case, let's see how these uh, arts can give the rise of the robots a new style, a new innovation, a new creation of the robots. Let's start arts robotics. If back to 20 years ago, we look into this origami folding. That was the picture I took in London uh, 20 years ago. So that's the ellipse Arden. For those cartons, they still utilize all the human beings. For these typical origami cartons, they have to use a supervisor and they have to teach using four, 10 fingers. So in such case, how to do automation? Can we do robotics? So that's the case which you place on my desk every day. Whenever I came to my office, I got full of origami. I need to see any way I can automate, any way I can use a robotic hand. So the first thing I need to study is study those origami to see how they behave. And in such case, we can use robotics to do. Let's see this is a typical example. So you see how strange, how creative from a flat to a finished cotton. So in such case, I cast a principle on this uh, art to mechanisms. So I can change any art to any kinematics, to any mechanisms, which will be skeletons of robots. And this paper was awarded um, best paper, and which is one of the four only best papers in 1990s in four conferences. And this is the doctrine I set up to make this origami robot, to make a metamorphic mechanisms. So if we look into this arts robot, we can see how origami, how arts inspired robotics innovation. We see this is a typical case for this origami cotton. And we look into this cotton, we take off the base, and we can construct a linkage, and we construct new mechanisms. And that was the work from Dr. Ray, who is now a lecturer at Salford University. He's here. So um, that's the work, and we see how these work from origami cotton to mechanisms. And so in such case, I work with my students, including Professor Rodriguez Leo, my former PhD student, and now associate professor in Mexico. So a typical metamorphic AR linkage can be generated from a rotating cube. So if we take one cube, and we can open up to form a linkage, and still, based on my fundamental doctrines, which it casts any art into linkage, and to give a mechanism. That's from Dr. Ke Tao Zhang, my former PhD student now in Imperial. And we can see this linkage how is created by origami. And this linkage now has a full mode motion, which is change all mobility linkage in different motion style. And further work on this origami, I have said to my student, this is possibly is the world first parallel robot folded by paper. So it's a paper folded 
para robot. And in such case, this para robot can change all the topology and change all the structure, which gives the versatility and topological variables. And particularly in this link, if we say this is a typical joint, which you can change the mobility from one to two to three and back to one. Using this uh, typical invented joints, we can change all the structure of parallel robots. And this comes with my research on parallel robot for ankle rehabilitation in 2005. Um, my former PhD student, Jody Sagalier is now working in IIT on this r -Bot, which gained 10 million euro support from Italian insurance and health department. Art and origami, we can fold origami into medical robots. That's the joint work with Ariana Manchesi from SS. SA in Pisa. So she sent a student to my lab, that's Marco Saloni, with Dr. Kurt Hozang, and we work together to create this origami medical robots. A further work, we go to this deployable mechanisms. And we can see how deployable mechanisms become. That's that's the work also joined by Dr. We go away from lec now lecturer at Salford University. With all different types of deployable and shrinkable and changeable of structures. We look into development in some other places in the world. You can see our next development from origami to robot walker. And we call this a metamorphic walker, still based on my paper setup principle in 1999 on metamorphic mechanisms of foldable, erectable, so that's origami type. And you can see the development of this walking robot. See the change from different animals, from insects to a mammal. And in such case, we can see the principle set up in this metamorphic robot, in this reconfigurable robot. So the principle is we can map this art into linkage, and we map into this uh, mathematical description. And with all the development in Harvard, in career, with a different mobility, different style of origami robots. In particular, if we look into the top figure, we can see how this robot is changing from outer leg folding 
to next stage. So this is a different state to next stage of motor alignment, and then to the third stage of body holding. To the legs coming, to the stand up, and to walk. So in the leg, unfolding and then to start walking for operation. So that's the peculiar from origami, peculiar from art, which give all the inspiration, all the change of style of robots. In such case, the robots are not constantly unchangeable. They have appear in various forms and in various uh, gates. So that's the, they claim, that's from Korea, Korean. They claim that's the world fastest robots. And from Boston Dynamics. So if we look into world development origami robots, we can see, um, the heat is coming up from this stage. So after 2007, the heat is coming. And with all the origami geometric folding to robotic origami to hardwood and to soil um, origami robots. And in 20 years ago, I was uh, with Unilever Research. So I was studying this origami to see how this can be automated and how this can be transferred into a mechanism, into a linkage, into a reconfigurable robotic system. So here, we have a harmony among arts, robots, and kinematics. So we see one example. I give you an example of Leonardo da Vinci. Now I give you another example of a sculptor. That's Charles, who invented this linkage. And just by playing all the cube, and discovered and cut cube, and discovered there's a linkage which you can turn inside out and outside in. And this linkage is a confirmed by previous mathematician Bricard, and they can convert into a Charles linkage. If we look into particular this link, if we plot the link, we can see the picture. That's a very nice rural surface with a double circles with a link across over. And this is the world first over-constrained linkage, which apply to industry. Which industry? To concrete mixer. Because the link in this space open up, the whole space is mixing all the materials. So it's the best mixture. So I think this sculptor became an engineer and he patterned this link. If we look again on this uh, art, so that's a beautiful surface I generated in 1992 and 1994. In particular, I generated from wrist. So for wrist, I take two angles. I can plot the whole diagram here. Uh, at that time, we don't have a fastest computer, so I use a sun station. That's the fastest back to 24 years ago. And in such case, I utilize all the um, harmony between kinematics, mechanisms, and arts. I created this uh, doctrine, and this, uh, these papers are forming a particular theory. And in such case, I created this English version of work, although I finished in 2011 but I haven't published. 
I translate it into a Chinese version, and an English version will come out next year. So we can see this harmony between arts, mathematics, and robotics. Now we see another example how this art is inspiring robotics invention and innovation. We all know if you look into YouTube, metamorphic hand. So how metamorphic hand comes out, we still need to back to 1999. Uh, in my paper, I created this uh, doctrine which map all the arts into a linkage. So into this linkage, in 2004, um, we are in strand. So I need to go over to Blackfriars to take a train back home, try to save my tube fare. So I walk around this bank of River Thames. So I'm thinking, I'm an engineer, I'm a robotist. So I created this linkage from art. What's the use of that? The maximum use is in satellite, and also, this is a particular linkage. It's a metamorphic linkage which you can change in mobility, degree of freedom. So while on the way to Blackfriars, I thought I'm robotist. I need to change it to robots. So how to change it? I plant finger on each link. So in such case, this will become a linkage of hand. So this is a robotic hand. And then you can see later on, uh, in the past 12 years, I developed from the first prototype to 2007 and simulation to 2010 prototype. And then two more prototypes you can see in the next few slides. However, if we compare this particular metamorphic hand to conventional robotic hand, we see all the conventional robotic hand, they have two features. They have a palm, they have fingers. And palm is a rigid block. However, this metamorphic hand has a variable palm, a foldable palm. They can change it to triangle, which is is a fixed palm, and they can change it flexible with a one mobility, four link. They can change it to whole mobility with five links. So here comes the 2015 version of this hand. Um, this is a hand also participated by my past PhD students. So that's uh, Dr. Lei Chui, now senior lecturer in Curtin University. Dr. Guo Wei, now lecturer at Southern University. Dr. Helge Woodman, now UCL lecturer. And Dr. Kurt Zhang, now Imperial. So we see all the hands development, particularly in this squirrel project. In particular, this palm is working on hemisphere, but this hemisphere, from lower hemisphere to upper hemisphere, they have to cross the singularity. And we have a particular interesting algorithm to cross the singularity to change your workspace. So still reconfigurable, sometimes the workspace is large, and sometimes the workspace is small. And that's the 2012 version in this anthropomorphic metamorphic hand. And we can see how this hand is doing this uh, in-hand manipulation. <coughs> we can see folding top. We can see change of collision.
This work was done in 2013 in a European TOMZ project. And then closing the cover. to insert flap. If we see this in particular, that's a two hands operation. That's my researcher's two hands. And then we can see the metamorphic two hands. So we have a primary hand and we have a secondary hand in silver color. And we can see the inset video. So that's the inset. You can see the back of the hand operation and the front of hand operation. So this comes to cooperation with the two hands. In particular, in this closing part, two hands needs to have done this transition from one finger to another finger and to eventually lock the tap into the slot. So finally, tuck in and fold it into a place. So this hand is now applied to square for kindergartens education. And you can see the operation of hand for various objects. So that's a human arm. And we see next uh, video with a robot arm rather than human arm. So we have a hand and we have a robot arm and we have a mobile platform which is doing all the operations. And this hand is also used for this uh, Beef deboning, another sexy project. <laughs> to use a robot to do the food processing. And Dr. Helga Udiman is in the project, a leading project, and she's now a lecturer at UCL. With Wahid Amanzadi, he's now at Shadow Robotics. Because Wahid is doing so much on robotic hand, so Shadow hates to lose him and try to attract him over to Shadow. And we can see this, uh, all the work on this uh, robot hand, human hand corporations. So that was the video took by Dr. Helga Woodman on beef deboning action. And we see this action, how to replace the human being with a robot hand. So the robot hand on the left-hand side, a human hand on the right-hand side. So in such case, whatever you spend a lot of effort, you cannot cut yourself. You only cut robot hand. And that's OK. <laughs> so that's the whole purpose, try to replace the human left hand with a robot hand. So for all the operations, we see we got all the development innovation from arts. We got all the inspiration from arts. And we need to apply to industry. So we did, we applied to packaging, to a reconfigurable packaging. And the work was also done by Professor Liu. He's my former PhD student and now professor at Burnmouth University. 
and Dr. Canella from Italy. He was my former PhD student and now team leader in Italian Institute of Technology. And Professor Darwin Cover and I uh, joined together to investigate origami-based packaging for food industry in this high-profile journal. So if we look into these uh, studies, we can see, go back to my study in 1997 at Unilever Research, Paul Sunlight Laboratory. So I designed this double hand, double arm, and then we go for this uh, robot fingers for folding origami. That was done by Wenke Dubi, my former postdoc and now professor at Bournemouth University. So Professor Liu is from uh, Portsmouth University. And we study the packaging robots. And we develop this packaging robot with the Unilever research. And you can see how this can be reconfigurable from different cartons to an open paper carton. And we further applied to Bendix chocolate company. So with a reconfigurable packaging that was based in 2007 work. And in particular, the corner of this cotton, when they double fold it, you can see they lock themselves. So this set of mechanism is a, such a delicate, such an ingenious design, which helped to lock anything and help to do the reconfigurable, to change it to any different cartons. And that's the project with all the partners from e supported by EPRC, EPSRC and DEFRO, and between Bath, Kings, and all the companies. And we have a Dr. Yao, my former PhD, and now lecturer at Strathclyde University. He's here today. And so that's the work on this. So here comes the arts. We have a robot doctrine. So we push the metamorphosis. We push these reconfigurations. And the philosophy is to change all the origami, foldable arts into mechanisms, into robots. So in such case, we can give this is art, mimetics, metamorphosis, and reconfiguration. And in nowadays, in current development, we do need this reconfiguration. We cannot generate a robot which can do all single tasks. They have to do multitask. They have to vary themselves to adapt to different requirements, different needs. I have an example here, and people might be familiar. So you can see how this change from a car to robots to all dancing and singing. And then back to a car. So this is the doctrine we need to adapt. We need transformative, we need reconfiguration, we need metamorphosis. And metamorphosis is a new way of mechanism innovation. And mechanisms, we say, is a skeletons of any robots. So um, last year, I joined Professor Gogu, a leading mechanism expert in France, to set up this special issue on morphing, metamorphosis, and reconfiguration through constraint variations in this mechanism machine theory. And we can see how this 
doctrine can be set up, we look into our human species. In several million years, we develop into current stage. We look into machines in several hundred years since the first industrial revolution, we develop into current modern machines. Can we change those machines into a flip over? Just a second change, and we can jump over 100 years and jump over million years. So that's the philosophy in reconfiguration, in change, in variable, in metamorphosis. And that's the development in metamorphic mechanisms and reconfigurable robots in the past 20 years. In 2009, I set up this prestigious three years uh, apart international conference. And we call RIMA 2009, and our senior vice principal, Chris, was coming to the opening. I will show the field photo later. And we have a second IEEE International Conference on Reconfigurable Mechanism and Robots, and we have third, we have fourth to be held in 2018 in Amsterdam. Because it's in such a high standard in IEEE sponsored conferences, so whenever proceedings come out, uh, it was automatically cited by EI Compendix. And we can see all the world development in America, we have a metamorphic compliant mechanisms. In France, we have MSC on metamorphic parallel mechanisms. In Italy, we have a metamorphic gripper. In Australia, we have a MSC on reconfigurable mechanisms, and these are all published in the SCI citation journal. So that was the start because I think in last century, there are only two new mechanisms. So one is a kinematotropic, which is developed by Carl Warhart in Swiss, Switzerland, and then metamorphic mechanisms. But because this costs so much inspiration, so so many people are developing different mechanisms different robots. So that's why I propose this reconfigurable mechanisms and reconfigurable me robots that were accepted worldwide by many societies, by many people, many groups. That was the success of this uh, mechanism conference. And we can see um, our principal gave the opening speech, and that's our um, senior vice president. Chris Mottish head. And John Gray, who was the uh, flag in UK robotics. And we have a wonderful banquet in exactly this place, in the Great Hall. And we have all the participants. Following the success, we have the second IEEE ASME International Conference on Reconfigurable Mechanism and Robots. And that's the RIMA 2012 published in Springer for the proceedings. And we have all the leading experts, Ken Wojong from Stanford, Hong Sen Yang from Taiwan, Larry Howell from Brigham Young, Joost Herder from um, Delft University. And we have the award ceremony and honored by the participations of Professor Darren Corwell and Professor Brian Davis and Larry Harwell. Um, Greg Shirek Zhang, who is the editor in chief of Robotica. And we have a third international conference, RIMA. And we have a fourth to be held in Delft, in Amsterdam. 
So with those, so I, I was, was fortunate to be awarded ASME Mechanism and Robot Award, which awarded to science and engineers with a lifelong contribution to fundamental theory design and application. And in the past 41 years, we have 27 awardees. If we are studying robotics, we know DH method, DH parameter. So H is Hartenberg. So Hartenberg was the first who got this award. And then we have an American, this guru in mechanisms and linkage, Floyd Dinsden, uh, who passed away in 2006 um, with the age of 92. And we have Cosley, we have Sando, we have Ken Watson from Stanford, Dorothy from Florida, and Mr. A.T. Young, Angelus from McGill University, and Gosling from Quebec. Larry Howell. And so um, in the past 10 years, we have uh, those awardees. So I was fortunate to be awarded and uh, give me a surprise. So for my talk, I thank my current group members. I thank my past group members. Thank you. Thank you very much. So we now have a vote of thanks from Professor Darwin Caldwell, who I believe is sitting over here, yes, who is the research director of the Italian Institute for Technology in Genoa. Thanks, Darwin. Thank you very much. Um, a few weeks ago when Jayan contacted me and, and asked me to come along to this, it was my great honor to be able to reply and say that, yes, I would be able to come here. Along with yourselves, I've listened to this presentation tonight, uh, and you can see the quality and the quantity of the work which Jiang has been um, part of over, over his career. Um, one of the things he didn't actually point out was that he talks back to his early papers in 1996 and 1998. Unfortunately, I knew Jiang even before that time. Um, in fact, I knew Jiang when he was still a PhD student. Um, so all those students who actually now are in senior positions, I knew him he, when he was still one of the PhD students. And I've been really fortunate over the years to stay in very close contact, to call him a friend during that time, during his time at Salford, his time at uh, Unilever, Sunderland, then coming to Keynes. Um, in fact, when I went to, to IIT, um, that was 10 years ago and when IIT was first formed. Um, Jayan came to IIT and was part of helping me to set up and establish IIT at that particular time. Uh, and what we can actually see is the quality of everything. What I hadn't actually noticed before was that the combination of Jayan's interest in science, which we all know about, and the quality of his research, which is shown in the award which he got for this, um, from the ASME, um, but also his interest in, in art. I, I knew of his interest in um, origami, but I never really perceived it as, as this art side of things. But one of the other sides, which he didn't really pull out and, and, and comes out very well, he has here um, Judy Celia. Now, if you actually look at one of the boards at the side on uh, rehabilitation systems, and Jiang talked a little about this. Back in 2004, well, yes. 2004, yes. Jiang started working on a, an ankle rehabilitation system with some of his early students. Jody um, came from Italy to Keynes to do his master's. Um, fortunately, we persuaded him to come back to Italy to do his PhD. Uh, I mean, Jiang stayed associated with that and was his co-supervisor during that particular time. And so he developed the mechanism which you can actually see. After Jody actually had completed his PhD, he stayed on to do a postdoc at IIT. He then got funding from um, Italian Health Service, the seven million which um, Jiang had just 
talked about. But what Jiang doesn't actually know is that two months ago, Jody was part of a consortium that set up a new company with 10 million of startup funding. Um, and so they actually have a new company which will actually sell these rehabilitation systems. So we can see that in Jiang's work, we have superb academic credentials. We have great art credentials and it really produces outputs which create jobs and create benefits to societies. Um, it's my great pleasure to be able to, to say to my friend, uh, Jiang Dai, thank you very much for this presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Well done, Dai. Thank you. Um, there's a... Oh, yeah. Uh, thank you. <laughs> yes. So, that's uh, from my former PhD student, Professor Hong Hai Liu at Portsmouth University, now leading robotics no. in intelligent robotics. Thank you. I truly appreciate what I have received from uh, Dr. Dai in the last, uh, last uh, almost 15 years. Thank yeah. you. I truly right. appreciate it. Thank you.